Hello, I am Flash Isaac and today I'll be taking you through Vein Diagram. I released three videos earlier on sets, many of sets, questions under sets, uh, 17 terms used in sets and law of sets. I've covered all that. I will share the link below. If you are watching on YouTube, simply check the description for the link. If you are watching via other sources, you can search Flash Learners on YouTube and you see my set videos under mathematics. Now, Venn diagram. Venn diagram is used to represent sets. Set. Set is a well-defined collection of distinct objects. So the collection must be defined and no two elements in a set can be the same. Venn diagram is a diagram used to represent set. And it was proposed in 1880 by John Venn. John Vane. So the name was gotten from his own name, Vane Diagram. Let A be set of 10 best friends. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Giving this set 10 best friends. So let M be those who love mathematics. E, those who love English. So if out of 10 friends, Roots, Isaac, Rejoice, Wisdom, and Cain love mathematics, Roots, Osato, and Isaac loves English. So, A is the universal set. M, mathematics. E, English. So, we can say, we can draw something like this. Can draw something like this. This is A, set A. So, those who love mathematics, let's represent it with their, the initial. So, arrow. I another arrow, let, let this be small arrow W and K. So this love mathematics. Then you can come here English English arrow O I. These guys love English. Now look at the remaining ones. Wisdom is here, rejoice is here. Okay, Gina. Gina, Joy, okay, Joy is not among Joy, Osato is here, Edith, so this is a Venn diagram, those who love mathematics, those who love English, now, the remaining guys are also in the set, whether they love math or not, so they have to be in the universal set, so we've picked those who love math, We've picked those who love English. Now, these are the remaining ones inside the universal set. So, this is a vein diagram. When you look at this vein diagram very well, you will notice something. Arrow here, rejoice is here, root is here. So, arrow here, this is root, root. So, root loves. English and Ruth also love maths. Isaac loves English and Isaac also loves maths. So we have to I. So we can draw the Venn diagram to show this happiness, to separate the set. So in that case, let's bring out those who love uh, maths and English, those who love similar things. So the same persons who love similar subjects. In that case, the diagram becomes it becomes a the universal set with all the values. So you draw something like this. You see? So this is the Venn diagram. Let this be M mathematics. Uh, let this be N A E. So this is mathematics and this is English. Now this place represent those who love both of them that is the intersection 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 is a set term used to replace something that two sets have in common mind you these are two sets so we are drawing venn diagram for two sets a m and e where this is the universal set so this is intersection what they have in common now looking at this, 
uh, I, I Ruth, Ruth and Ruth love English. So Ruth loves math. Ruth loves English. So that means he's here. So she's in both of them. Isaac loves math. Isaac loves English. So Isaac is also here. So we're using their initials. So this is where they are. So where, what they have in common. So if you are say what is M intersection E is simply arrow I. So intersection you said is what they have in common. So if you are giving the Venn diagram or you are giving something like this and you are asked to represent in Venn diagram, this is it. And if you are saying okay, look for the intersection. So this is the intersection M and E. So M intersection E is arrow I. Or you can give the set arrow I. Set is represented by curly brackets. So that is the intersection. So now, now, now that we've picked uh, what they have in common, what is remaining? So uh, rejoice is remaining, wisdom is remaining, Ken is remaining. So this one still has three remaining. Then here, Ruth and Isaac, the Osato is remaining. So we've picked that. Then the universal set remains the same. So Gina is G, Joy is J, Edith is E, Precious is P. So that's how you draw Venn diagrams for two sets. So if you say a, a, a M intersection E is just here, then if you say M a, a union E, so it's everything. So that's the union. So you can go back to my video on uh, set terms and set as, uh, explanations. So this is it, Venn diagram for two sets. And for O level, most times you stop at uh, looking for a uh, union of a Venn, uh, Venn diagram and the intersection. This is a sample Venn diagram to represent three sets. So now we have just two, those who love mathematics and those who love English. So let's add one, those who love computer. So let's say those who love computer are uh, Gina, Gina, uh, Rejoice, and Isaac. So this three set now. So how do we represent it here? So for three set Venn diagram, the first thing you do is let's look for the universal set. This is the universal set A. It can be anything, any value, but it's a set that contains what is in other sets. So A universal set. Now, what should we put here? What should we put here? What should we put here? For this set, let's say this is set M, mass, English, and computer. Here, let me say uh, W, S, Y. I'm just doing it for illustration. Okay, let's say here is Z. So now what is supposed to be in this Z or inside here is what the three sets have in common. What they have in common, the intersection. Why S is to represent what M and C has in common. So what has what is in M and in C, what they both have in common. Y is for what E and C has in common. Why W is for what M and E has in common. So let's look at this set for example. Uh, three of them have Isaac in common. So Isaac loves maths, English, and computer. So that means here yeah, we represent Isaac. And it's not just uh, it's not just letters. It can be numbers. So I will do an example for numbers. Now, what does M and E have in common? So M and E. So they have roots in common. So, uh, arrow, uh, uh, Isaac, we can't put Isaac again because Isaac is already here. So, three of them have M in common. We can't put Isaac because C also has Isaac. So, it's not just for M and E. So, arrow. And C doesn't have Isaac. Uh, okay, C has Isaac, but Isaac is already taken. So, we can't add it. So the thing that only M and E has in common, only M and E has in common that C doesn't have is uh, roots. That is it. So they don't have Osato in common. Now, what does M and C have in common? M and computer. 
rejoice. So M and C, they have rejoice in common. So here, M and C, they have arrow in common. So you can also be numbers, values, this. Now, what does E and C have in common? E and C, Gina, they have only Isaac in common, but it's not just for them. M also has Isaac. So they don't have anything that is common to only both of them. So it's like that. Now, what is remaining in M after removing Ruth and Isaac? So after removing Ruth and Isaac and rejoice, after removing Ruth, Isaac and rejoice, Ruth, Isaac and rejoice, M is not left with wisdom and Ken. Understand, right? Then, after removing uh, wisdom, okay, look, this is E. After removing, uh, after removing Ruth and Isaac, what is remaining in E? Is Osato. Now look at C. After removing Ruth, sorry, okay, re, after removing Rejoice, after removing Isaac, so what is left? Gina. So Gina is what is left that only C has. You see? So the remaining stuff here that I'm not included in the set, Edit, will be here. Uh, Ken. We, Ken is here. Uh, we use Ken. Edith, Osato, Gina, Joy. Okay, we've not used Joy. Joy will remain here in the universal set. And maybe any other person you can spot that is no part of the this thing. So this universal set, what is left in the universal set? What only C has, has Gina? What only E has? What only M has? So that's how you draw a Venn diagram for three sets. Now let me bring another question. Since you are seeing name of persons, let's talk about values. If you are giving the question, to represent it with Venn diagram, they will tell you that a class of hundred students, a class of hundred students. So that hundred students is the universal set, universal total students. So in that case, okay, let me draw something here again. So I'm bringing out the question from my head, and I'm interpreting in case you see something like that. So this is the class. So let's say the universal sets, let it be C class. So let's say C. Oh, you can just put 100 here. 100. So let's say uh, 20 loves mass. So those who love mass, 20. Remember, they didn't say those who love mass only. They didn't say those who love mass. When they say those who love mass. So 20 loves mass. It doesn't mean it's only 20 that love mass. That's why sometimes when you, can, uh, when you count all the values, it will be more than 100. So 20 love maths, it means out of these 20, some of them can love English, some of them can love chemistry. Okay? Now, let's continue with the question. Uh, 30 loves English. So English, 30. So we are reading the question. Now we have question we are interpreting. And 50 of them loves chemistry. So let's say those who love chemistry is equals 50. Now, 5 loves math and English. You get 5 loves math and English. So this implies that math and English, 5, what they have in common. So this M intersection E. Sweet, right? Good. Uh, 10 loves math and chemistry. So, mass and chemistry, they have 10 in common. They do not tell you that, okay, C's, another C's, love chemistry and English. So, that means chemistry and English, what is common between them is C's. They do not tell you, okay, uh, five loves all the subjects. So, this is those who love all the subjects. So, with this explanation, it makes sense to you, right? So, that's how Venn diagram works. Now, in the question, after giving all the values, they will not tell you that, okay, uh, they can even say 10 love none of the subjects. So this thing will not be the remaining value in the universal set. So they will not tell you how many of them love math and English. In that case, they, think they won't give you uh, the number of persons who love math and English. They can say how many love math and English as the question. In that case, let it be what? S. Or... 5 is here, they'll ask you how many of them love all the subjects. 
it will be S. So they can ask you any one. So if the any one you are being asked, you represent with the S or any value, you draw your Venn diagram like this, then you start solving. So this is it on how to draw, interpret, and use Venn diagram. In my next video, I will bring out practical questions on Venn diagram. So you see the questions and the things they ask and how to go about it. So by then it will make a whole lot of sense, good sense, sweet sense to you. Trust me. <laughs> Alright, thank you. Check out my next video and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Very important.